My name is Namara. I am the founding educator representing We Love Philly, nonprofit organization. Thank you so much for sharing all of your insights and experiences with the work that you do. Um, my question was really focused on the intersection of transparency and how you are collaborating with the community, specifically with youth and elders, because I, I personally feel that we as adults, our main driving force should be serving the youth and the elders who really, the elders hold our history while the youth hold our future. So how has that been integrated in your design making and can any of you share how you've been centering their voices? Well, it's interesting, that was almost a setup question for me. I, we, we, we started out working at a Philadelphia school, um, Overbrook High School, and it was in their environmental service learning community. And, we, and they weren't known for STEM or the high grades in math or science. And at the time I was working for government and um, was responsible for people seeing infrastructure, particularly with the water department. And so we were getting these kids out of the class and it wasn't called project-based learning at the time, but it was project-based learning. We had a community of kids who learned by doing. And it, as such, they became more interested in where they lived because we didn't talk about penguins and polar bears and ice caps. We were talking about their neighborhood, the air they breathed, the water they drank, and the land that they walked on, and the food that grew out of that land, and, and developed a curriculum, and that curriculum became a center, and that center became an, our institution that we operate out of today. Development came as a byproduct of the interests of that constituency. So our whole work is a byproduct, is a very organic byproduct of not just the children, but it was their parents and their concerns, because we were pointing out things, and eventually they said, well, you're just gonna leave us here with these problems, and they sort of threw the gauntlet down and said, you're just like the rest of them. And we're like, oh, wait a minute. We're, no, we're better than that. We can help you solve some of these problems. And we just put out a charge and said, look, you're never too young to take yourself seriously, and if you take yourself seriously, we're there to help. And so 27 years later, we're still helping. So <laughs> we got in accidentally, we just couldn't get out. I'll give you one example uh, from the work we do at MTWB. Uh, in first, we think of playgrounds, you know who use playgrounds? Kids and grandparents. Um, I, I think at a high level, sort of uh, an MTWB mandate is we want to design public spaces that there's something for everyone. Um, and, you know, I played football, but I think we've only done one football field uh, in, in our four sites. Um, so first, we want to design for everybody. I think, I'll say smart design, smart design. Um, at Smith Playground, one thing we sort of, again, I didn't come up with it, but designers came up with this, is it's a huge site with two playgrounds, three basketball courts, this outdoor sort of fitness uh, space, sort of pub, like uh, leisure green space. Um, but talking to, and it's so big, talking to parents or grandparents, it's like, well, we, we can't exercise, we need to exercise here, but our kids are running around this huge site, so we designed this, this uh, sort of figure eight walking path. So if your kid's playing basketball or he's at a playground, your walking path, you know, there's, there's only a, a few spots where you, you don't have a sight line to your kid, uh, which I thought you know, solve that with good design, right? So you had parents could get exercise while they're, while they're watching the kids. Uh, but one, one thing I'm, I'm super proud of that we've done at every site is we have, we, we have what we call our youth, youth project teams. Uh, and so kids come to community meetings, they come to some of these other events, but we have, we facilitate like a 10 week summer youth project team. And uh, we program it. Ideally, it's sort of when construction is going on. Um, and so kids, they meet sort of the subcontractors on site. They talk about what they're doing. Uh, we, we, we take them to the Eagles facility and they walk through a stadium and learn about all the operations of inside a stadium. We have a partnership with Temple. We take them to Temple and they talk with, with architecture students uh, in, in different sort of off sites. But the whole idea is to, again, engage them through this whole process, 
teach them more of sort of the inside of, of building something in their neighborhood and then inspiring them to, to understand there's, there's a wide range of career paths uh, that are available around sort of public spaces or architecture or construction and so on. So the youth project is one youth project team we've done it at every site and one way we really try to keep the, the kids involved in the process. I think we're similarly trying to embed more youth centric uh, things into our design processes. They're already stakeholders, so the same way we'd engage stakeholders, we design opportunities for them into any of our processes, but we do think that we need to do it a little bit better, and we've been talking a lot internally about how we can improve that. One thing I've been really fighting to get funding, I've tried to get it funded twice already, is it, it's like, I'm calling it KDR, like a kid civic design review that we could have live. Um, downtown between the collaborative and the Center for Architecture and their ADE program where we could like train a group of cohort of kids to be able to like really come in and like respond in that any project in the city that had children um, sort of as a central user could come, could they could self-identify and come to C kids CDR and the kids could sort of give them feedback. Uh, one, because it would be hilarious for me to watch. <laughs> All of my peers and colleagues have to receive feedback from children, uh, but also because they're, they're really astute and they really like cut to the heart of prob problems. Um, and we find that when, even when you explain something that is design and technically very difficult, kids understand it better than 75% of the adults in the room every time. I love that, Taya. I'm in for kid review and I will mention uh, just to your question and some of the things you just described, um, my last organization, ULI, in conjunction with the other built environment groups, uh, we think about this a lot, or they, I am now a member, um, how to engage high schoolers, college students, and other children in this is process. And we run this program called Urban Plan, which is, we maybe have some volunteer, Urban Plan volunteers here, is a development training curriculum that can be delivered to high school students, college students, and public officials. Um, and so we've done a couple of different versions of this. The first, I believe, was to, um, we did one to CDC, actually, leadership. That was really, really interesting. Um, we did one for city council staff. And in the, it's an exercise, and um, groups have a fictitious development site a fictitious pro forma design, it's the Lego thing. Um, but anyway, everybody has to get into a different role and really have those trade-off conversations. And this is a long way of saying, the one we did for high school students was so amazing because we had developers and architects who were kind of the, the fake city council questioning these kids. And they had actually read every page of the manual, not assumed that they knew the answer to kind of the design question or the development question, and had the best responses to our developer, you know, long experienced developers kind of poking and prodding at their proposal, which is what they're supposed to do. So I learned so much from Urban Plan for Students, and I think it's a great question and a really important thing for us all to think about as we think about engaging communities and residents, because these people are a very important part of it.